Welcome back to another special episode of Organic Chemistry, and today we're going to talk about opening the gates of hell with deoxiflor. So this is my origin story, and I'll give you a little bit of background. So we had purchased a bottle of deoxiflor from a chemical company that rhymes with Blastadec. Now we had ordered deoxiflor from Blastadec before, and it had previously appeared as a wine red liquid. They described it as Bordeaux colored. It's also fairly viscous, which wasn't the case in this most recent batch. And so I was doing the attempted fluorination of methyl thionobenzoate. Now I'm not going to get into why we were trying to make this uh, at this point in time, but you can see that there's this reaction where we take a thionoester in the presence of deoxiflor and a catalytic amount of antimony trichloride in dichloromethane, and we get dichloromethyl benzyl ether as our product. This is a picture of methyl thionobenzoate on the right. It's a beautiful orange colored compound. It's actually yellow if it's completely pure, but most of the time when I made this, it was orange. If you want to see the fluorination paper where they first reported this, you can get that here. Now, what the deoxiflor looked like is shown here. So you can see it's kind of a dark black liquid. This is a little bit better lit, and it was much runnier than I would typically have expected, because this is probably like our third bottle of deoxiflor at this point. I'd been making this compound several different times, and I was struggling to isolate the product. Now it turns out that that difluoroether that I was trying to isolate is actually rather unstable in glass and in, on silica, so it was hydrolyzing as soon as I tried to purify it. But I took a picture of this because I thought it looked quite weird. So we took a picture of this. Now what happened is I set up this reaction, but first my friend took a picture of the black non-viscous deoxiflor because I had my arms in the glove box. I hadn't mentioned this yet, but we were doing this reaction in a glove box, which is a bad idea and you're going to see why pretty quickly. So what I did is I added the deoxiflor to my solution of the thionoester in DCM, which you can see here on the scale. And that was fine, nothing really happened. And then I added the, uh, the antimony trichloride. But before I could do that, it just so happened that the head of the chemistry department from my university was bringing through a group of visitors who was visiting the university. They were seeing the facilities that the university had available. And this is kind of one of those things to try and sell them on attending the university. And so he's giving them the spiel, telling them about like what we have, blah, blah, blah. And right as I add the antimony trichloride to the reaction, it turns green. I'm like, oh, cool, it turned green. Um, or rather, one of the students said that. And so one of the potential students had said, oh, look, it turned green. That's cool. I'm like, yeah, it is cool. And then suddenly in the stoppered vessel, it started filling with white fumes and it was moving all around like crazy in the headspace. I'm like, oh, no, this is probably making a gas and it's going to explode if I don't relieve the pressure. So I took out the stopper, and as I did that, it just filled the entire headspace of the entire glove box with white gas. And I'm like, oh no. And then if that wasn't bad enough, the whole flask just sprayed its contents out like a geyser and absolutely baptized our glove box in very corrosive deoxiflor. So if you don't know what deoxiflor is, it's a deoxifluorinating agent. Usually it'll react with alcohols, ketones, carbonyls, and replace the OH with a fluorine. And so basically this is like making HF on everything in the glove box. Now hopefully there's no water, but there's, you know, probably hydroxyl groups somewhere in there and all those hydroxyl groups have now fluorine. And so there's a lot of HF in the glove box essentially is what's happening in addition to whatever corrosive stuff happened. So that was kind of unfortunate. Now the professor immediately asked the group to all leave the lab. They're like, oh, sorry, the tour has to come to an end now because we're having an emergency. So they all rush out like what the heck just happened? And so uh, he says to my friend, he's like, go get the lab supervisor. And my friend's frozen there, just like a deer in the headlights. He's like, just staring at just like, what just happened? A and he's like, dude, go get the lab supervisor. And he's still frozen still. And he's like, dude, go get the lab supervisor. And so he runs out of the lab and we're just trying to deal with what happened. Like, like, what are you even supposed to do after this happens? Like, like we don't have protocol for this. And so we decided it would be a good idea to close off the glove box catalyst, which is supposed to normally keep air and water out of the glove box, oxygen and water. So we closed that. Obviously, the damage is already done with all the white smoke. And then we had to decide how to appropriately vent it. And so what we ended up doing is we ended up just like exhausting the glove box and then just like backfilling with nitrogen until all the white fumes were gone. Um, oh, but that that didn't solve the problem because there's still this massive mess that's still making HF over the entire glove box. And so I was an undergrad when this happened. And so it's not like I could just stay for eight hours and clean it up. And there wasn't uh, that many other senior lab members at the time. So anyway, if you're curious what that looked like, we had already wiped off the front part of the um, 
glove box so that we could see in, but you can see it's absolutely just annihilated our scale. There's a huge mess of all of the aluminum base. You can't see it here, but literally everything was covered in it. In this next image, you can see the top of the glove box, after I thought I'd already cleaned the rest of it off, still had a ton because all the stuff shot up and then stuck to it. And there's still scars in this glove box. It, it got permanently damaged. We had to go through and permanently, you know, relabel everything. It was awful. We went through several boxes of Kim wipes, and that's like all very corrosive waste that's going to make HF in air. It's like the worst thing you could have possibly imagined happened. Um, we also had to replace the glove box catalyst, which cost us over $1,000, so that was unfortunate. And uh, I decided to never work with deoxyfluor and find another way to make difluoroethers, which is what happened afterwards. Um, but on the bright side, I really wanted to mention here, the company whose name rhymes with Blastadec was willing to give us store credit, but they weren't willing to give us a refund, and they weren't willing to replace the cost of our dry train catalyst. Um, so after that, we didn't order from Blastadec. So hopefully this has been an entertaining story about opening the gates of hell. I would not recommend anyone work with fluorinating agents in a glove box. I would also not recommend anyone ordering from the company that rhymes with Blastadec, especially not Deoxyfluor. And if it looks suspicious at all, if you ever have a chemical that doesn't seem right, it's probably better to do a couple very small scale tests before just assuming it's fine and it's a one-off. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It would really help out the channel if you left a like and subscribed, and I hope you have a great day.